So, I welcome you all for the lecture 4 organic farming concepts and principles. So, we have discussed earlier regarding the introduction to organic farming and components of organic farming. So, in this lecture, we will discuss the fundamental concepts of organic farming and principles of organic farming. If you think the why you go for organic farming, the organic farming provides long term benefit to people and the environment. It involves the steps of using the factor of going green by using the fertilizers that are bio based to develop the crops, grow the crops in a green environment. In general, organic farming aims to increase long term soil fertility. As you know, uh, soil fertility that decides the growth and development of the crops. So, maintenance of soil fertility on long term basis is very essential to have a better production or increased productions in a sustainable environment. And the organic farming aims to control pests and diseases without harming environments as we discussed last class because the, the ill effect of the chemical pesticides, how that affects human health, how, how the organic farming can be helpful in minimizing the pest residue in crops and without minimizing or without affecting the crop yield. Thirdly, organic farming ensures that water stays clean and safe. So, you know we the we want a good air to breathe at the same time we want a good quality of water to drink through organic farming as we minimize or we eradicate the use of chemical pesticides or fertilizers. So, it can ensure a good quality water and clean water for drinking. Fourth one, it produces nutritious food, feed for animals and high quality crops to sell at good price. Organic farming as you discussed so the may the quality of the foods are better as you discussed last class because of the balanced nutrition supplying both macro and micronutrients. At the same time, the stress physiology that increases the quality of the crops through the increase in the concentration of polyphenols in the plant in the plant. And finally, this aims at use of existing resources. So, the farmers needs less money to buy from to buy uh, the farm inputs because if you recycle the resource available in the farm that can minimize the external use of inputs. So, uh, this is we are aiming for this uh, uh, organic farming. So, in our in brief you see the objectives the number one produce food with higher nutritional quality this is the main objective of the organic farming. So, better uh, quality of the produ uh, produce healthy foods, healthy diets that can be achieved through organic farming. And secondly, we work closely with the natural systems. We do we, we work in a harmony with the natures that is work with natural systems. Number three, maintain and increase soil fertility. So, as, as you discussed this is because soil fertility uh, to be maintained on long term basis. 
because soil provides the physical support of the plants and also that helps in the nutrient release part in the soils in the that that can be available for the crops for its proper growth and development. Number 4 use renewable resources as far as possible. So, that is one of the components of organic farming. So, we uh, natural resources or use the renewable resources in this through for the nutrients management uh, in organic farming. So, this avoids all sorts of pollutions either the air pollutions, soil pollutions and the water pollutions that is avoided through organic farming. Number 6 wider social and ecologic impact of farming systems so, through organic farming we say the nature farming. So, this is socially acceptable and it has a ecological harmony in the uh, farming community and number 7 allows satisfaction to agricultural producers so, farmers friendly. So, farmers gets one satisfactions by using organic farming. So, this is in brief I say this is the objective of organic farming and these are the each objectives that that is based on the concept that give the concepts. So, so this is the concepts you say the in describing the concepts work as closely as possible in closed cycle and use local resources. That means, as you discussed uh, in uh, last class 2. So, this is a zero emission concept integrated farming system concept where there is no waste in organic farming. The output of one component that becomes input of another components. So, that is a, in a closed cycle the closed chain says organic uh, farming uh, integrated farming systems and use the local resources or natural resources as far as possible. We avoid the use of off farm or the external inputs should be reduced in the organic farming. Then preserve the natural fertility of soil. So, the soil fertility has to be maintained or that may be improved through this the, the concept of the organic farming where we maintain the fertility and improve the soil fertility on long term basis as the concept of organic farming. Avoid all forms of pollution that arise from farming as it is either air pollutions, water pollutions or the soil pollutions. Then promote tillage practices that shows most concern for the environment and nature. So, uh, so in uh, other countries I can say the developed country like uh, uh, US there the tillage practices has been changed from the conventional to minimum tillage practices. So, that we can minimize the emission of uh, greenhouse gases so called the carbon dioxide from the soil to the atmosphere because uh, by rapid opening or the uh, opening of the soils through conventional tillage. So, more that that causes more emission of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So, in organic farming we need to go for the minimum tillage. So, that we should minimize the global warming potentials. Then produce foods for of an uh, optimal nutritional value of course, that is discussed. Uh, so, in organic farming that ensures high quality or the better quality of foods. Then reduce the use of non renewable resource in agriculture include the fossil fuels. So, by doing the so organic farming we can minimize the use of non renewable resources. We can encourage the use of the renewable resources in organic farming. Then what to ensure that the waste products from towns and the food industries achieve a quality that allows their reuse as fertilizers in agriculture. So, when you go for organic farming, so the, the food industry waste or the industrial waste, waste that can be converted to bio fertilizers that can be converted to useful manures and that can be used in organic farming. Provide all animals with living conditions that satisfy their natural behavior pattern and needs because uh, as animal is an integral component of organic farming. So, we must uh, provide the animals with living conditions that satisfy their natural behavior and pattern. Then do everything possible to ensure that all living organisms that farmers works with are allies. That means, both microorganisms plants and animals. So, they are the components of the organic farming in the vicious circles. So, they should be pro the proper harmony 
between all the components uh, all the uh, living organisms. So, uh, now uh, you, if you go for the organic farming the concept came that say we want to avoid the use of the off farm inputs. So, we want to use the in farm on farm inputs that is called low external input technology. So, what is uh, low external input technology? This technology that concerns collection of crop management inputs and technique for soil conservation, soil fertility enhancement, crop establishment and pest control. The delineation of the technology may serve either a restrictive or integrative purpose. So, a uh, low external input technology where you use only uh, the inputs of the farms they are recycled back the organic farming. So, minimum or the no use of off farm inputs in organic farming. So, the for the practices we uh, you can use low external input technology soil conservation soil fertility enhancement, crop establishment, pest control. For this suppose the components we are dealing for soil conservation. Soil conservation, soil fertility enhancement, soil fertility crop establishment pest control so low external input technology for soil conservations, we can go for reduced tillage, or you say as conservation tillage, mulches or cover crops so physical measures as a contour planting So, when our purpose is soil conservations either for the to protect the soil from wind or water erosions, then you go, you go for the contour planting is a physical method as we plant the crops across the slopes. So, that the uh, soil loss can be minimized through contour planting and reduced tillage or conservation tillage this is, uh, this is also uh, one of the method of the, soil, uh, the tillage practices that can minimize soil loss. Has. So, through minimum tillage, the less opening of the soils, that is a row zone tillage, then tillage operation can be performed only in the row zones where the crop has to be planted. So, the, in that case, we can build the soil fertility on long term basis, we can minimize the emission of carbon dioxide atmosphere, uh, also we can increase the soil microbial populations through minimum tillage and the say conservation tillage uh, so this as one type of minimum tillage or we can have a stubble mulch tillage where the stubbles can be left on the soil surface. So, it can add the uh, fertility value to the soils and also it can increase the water uh, infiltrations the water holding capacity of the soil. Then mulches and the cover crops. So, you can have the bio mulches and the cover crops like short growing crops can be grown and the legume crops can be grown and also they can be there the straw there are the leftover materials can be incorporated in the soil. So, the soil conservation where are you for what are the techniques for the LEIT or the low external input technology. 
similarly soil fertility enhancement it can be either the green manures green manuring or compost that means we can go for the uh, green manuring and the compost ap applications so that you can maintain the soil fertility on in long term basis and the crop establishment that means how we can establish crop in the uh, seed bed so either the planting planting for example i can give you if you go for the planting in case of rice example that is sri system of rice intensification that means the planting technique the plant population nursery beds and the water management so in case of sri so you are using only one seedling and you are the wider spacing around 25 cm and 25 cm row to row and plant to plant spacing wider spacing with the wider spacing of the seedl in the seedl in the centers so spacing is 25 cm to 25 cm and one seedling per hill and only shallow water saturations in that case it enhances the more tiller formations and uh, the the better uh, uptake of the nutrient by the crop less competition among the seedlings and that is one of the component that leads to uh, higher productivity so crop establishment by uh, providing the proper space optimum spacing crop geometry that spacing must be maintained during planting or the sowing of the crops and the proper conditions soil moisture should be maintained so that the initial establishment of the crop can be well performed then the pest controls so as this pest controls intercrops intercrop or crop rotation or bio pesticide so these are the uh, uh, pest control intercrop or crop rotation so that we can minimize the pest populations and the bio pesticides as a uh, um, bio control agents that can, those can be used for uh, for minimizing the pest and disease and the weed population of course in the field so these are the some of the soil conservation soil fertility enhancement crop establishment or pest control low external input technology so uh, this uh, low external input technology those can be as, as part of the organic farming uh, as you say these are the two purposes one is called the uh, LEIT so as you say L low external input technology so either it is a restrictive or integrative or this may be integrative so low external input technology restrictive means it insulates farmers from use of any insecticides or ke chemical pesticides or chemical fertilizers that is a fully organic farming that is that is branded as organic agriculture in case of integrative so here so the farmers usually use the part or the some parts chemical fertilizer or the chemical pesticides are allowed so it is known as the integrated management that includes the use of the both chemical and organic sources that is integrative and restrictive means so there is no use of any chemical fertilizers or the chemical pesticides that is complete purely branded as the organic agriculture or integrative purposes means the of the total nutrients some parts may be organic and some parts may be chemicals or the integrated pest management also that includes different methods of pest management that integrative pest management so uh, these are the, the this is in restrictive known as low external input sustainable agriculture
is restrictive one there is no use of any chemical fertilizer pesticides that is known as low external input sustainable agriculture. So, this uh, low external input technology. So, the restrictive uh, purpose and the integrative purpose, the restrictive interpretation promotes LEIT as a way of insulating farmers from use of external inputs in the service of socio-economic and environmental ends. This promotes environmental sustainable small scale farming that emphasizes low external input sustainable agriculture or it promotes active participation in the market by offering a distinctive environmentally friendly brand such as organic agriculture. So, as we discussed this is a low external input technology small scale farming where the it, it uh, completely insulating farmers from use of external inputs. So, only on farm inputs and organic inputs are used that is low external input sustainable agriculture. The integrative interpretation uh, sees LEIT as an essential element in broad strategies of agricultural development. It incorporates low external input technology along with appropriate external inputs in strategies such as integrated nutrient management, integrated pest management. In cases, so there is a uh, issues when, you, when the, the some crops uh, we need to go for the integrated management, especially the cereals uh, where the, the crop nutrient requirement is uh, uh, very uh, spe on the specific growth stages. In that case, uh, uh, you want to supply nutrients in a particular amount at the particular growth stages and some crops like non-determinate crops like legumes crops where they require nutrients uh, as a at uh, continuous. So, depending upon the crop type, so what type of management should be there, the purpose is not to minimize the uh, loss in crop yield to maintain the crop yield using the through the organic farming. So, the uh, social criteria for the low external input sustainable agriculture is widespread and equitable adoption potential especially among the small farmers, reduced dependency on external institution, enhanced food security at the family and national level, respecting and building on indigenous knowledge, beliefs and value systems then contribution to employment generation. So, um, so usually organic farming as you discussed the ecological farming, the traditional farming. So, farmers they have their traditional knowledge say before, before the use of the insecticides or the pesticides, the farmers used to control, used to take care of the crops against the insect pest and disease and they used to uh, grow the crops as a uh, normal practice farm using only farm and manures. So, there are some uh, the indigenous knowledge. So, that should be considered what the knowledge in the uh, agricultural field. So, they have also some scientific findings. So, linkage of indigenous knowledge to scientific finding that should be looked into too. So, there are different concepts of uh, organic farming as say the USDA concept that means organic farming is a system which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetic inputs and to the maximum extent feasible rely upon crop rotations, crop residues, animal manures, off farm organic waste, mineral grade rock additives and biological systems of nutrient mobilizations and plant protections. The food and agricultural organization concept, organic agriculture is a unique production management system which promotes and enhances agro ecosystem health including biodiversity, biological cycle and soil biological activity and this is accomplished by using on farm agronomic, biological and mechanical methods in exclusion of all synthetic of farm inputs. Then philosophical concept organic farming in spirit of organic relationship that is in this system everything is connected with everything else. So, uh, you can say this uh, um, this different concept also we will be discussing in the uh, next, uh, other class continuing classes the how this uh, different type of 
organic farmings and then the principles of organic farmings based on the concepts we have the principles uh, we have uh, we'll discuss different type of uh, organic farming based on this concept ecological farming biodynamic farmings and uh, how the uh, homa farming also that's uh, uh, discussing the indigenous knowledge they are linked to the scientific understanding so as farmers were uh, doing their the uh, cultivations in the primitive ages when there was no pesticides no fertilizers so we will look into this and in the continuing class we will discuss in detail this farming concept and also this principles of organic farming thank you yeah, yeah.